Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later because we have to talk Missing Link. Because in today's spotlight is the brand new Takara Tomy C02 Convoy, a fully updated and newly molded take on the classic Optimus Prime toy from the very first year of Transformers. Now this is the anime version, which here has been given more of a cartoon accurate colour scheme and doesn't feature the trailer and combat deck, but I have the more traditional toy colours version on the way too, and I cannot wait for that. Now just before we kick off, regular viewers will know that I'm more into the sort of fully scripted and tightly edited style of review format these days, but I was so keen to share some initial thoughts on this figure that I decided to go a different way and essentially bring you my first impressions before circling back to doing a full and proper review once the toy colours version lands as well. And hey, if this is a format that works for you, then I think there's potential to continue doing both styles, more sort of, you know, quick unboxings alongside full script and polish reviews as well. So please let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see, and of course don't forget to drop me a like for this video as well please that would be lovely now before we look at the contents it's worth explaining that this figure is a new mold it's not a reissue a repaint or a retool of any kind i have seen a bit of confusion about that online uh, but it, it is of course heavily based off that design and almost one-to-one -one in terms of the appearance and i think you could really see that reverence in the packaging style too i mean it has new box art here uh, but it's very much in the style of the classic 1984 japanese packaging the takaratomi packaging and done by the same artist actually shin Wader. so that's pretty legendary by my standards and I think it honestly looks amazing. Anyway let's go ahead and get this thing open take a look at the contents and I cannot tell you how excited I've been for this thing. Ugh, just like a dream come true. See so yeah, here, this is everything you get in the box with this one. No trailer here, no combat deck or anything like that. That does come with the toy colours version instead. But you get Convoy himself, Optimus Prime of course. You get his gun, uh, his iconic blaster. Uh, you get a uh, little axe from the cartoon as well, from the pilot episode of the G1 cartoon. And a matrix. Of course, there's also included a little baggie of uh, instructions and other bits. You've got some stickers, uh, which is really unusual actually. This being the anime version, I think not a lot of people might be expecting this, but it does come with stickers. You also get a character card for those of you that like that kind of thing. You get this little red plastic decoder, tech spec decoder, which I'm sure might be a bit of a mystery to people if you didn't grow up with this era of toys during <laughs> during your childhood. I don't know, but you use it for the back of the box. There you go to reveal his tech specs on the little graph there. So that's that's kind of fun. Okay, so there's a little sheet of instructions just here. Not looking too bad, actually. It's not uh, It's not so intimidating, so I don't think this is going to cause anybody any problems. And finally, you've got this rather nifty little pamphlet included. It's just got lots of promotional photography on there, some really nice artwork in there too, so I think this looks uh, looks really good. But of course, it's the actual toy that we're really here to see, isn't it? And uh, as I say, I can't tell you how excited I've been for this. I know I've posted a lot about it online. Anybody who follows me will no doubt be uh, sick of me talking about this thing already but uh, that's just the way it is, I'm afraid. It's just uh, too exciting. Okay, so right out the box, and I'm honestly blown away by this thing. It is just classic Generation 1, 1984, Optimus Prime, Convoy, whatever you want to call him. It is it's the toy that I remember in, in many respects. Okay, so some things to mention about this guy. First of all, yes, it does have die cast and you can immediately feel that if you touch it here. <laughs> you know, it's got die cast in all the sort of familiar places that the vintage version of this toy had die cast. Uh, it does have rubber tires as well and they feel really, really good when you're kind of rolling them around. Uh, they're a little bit more kind of harder rubber than I, I might have expected sort of versus the the vintage toy as I say but still rubber so that's really good and of course it's got tons of lovely chrome and you can see that on the front there as well uh, it honestly looks magnificent and very close to the original it's even got the little classic rub sign on the top here uh, so you can give that a go and reveal his his true allegiance. I'm sure we all know what that is by now, but there you go. He is an Autobot, confirmed. Really lovely finish on the side of the cab here. And of course, a lot of this is, well, it's all paint uh, versus the decals and stickers that you would find on the kind of classic version. Uh, so that looks, looks stunning. A couple of little sprue marks or something just going on here. So that's slightly irritating i probably could have done without that to be honest but i guess it's not the end of the world now again the chrome is really worth a mention just looking absolutely beautiful here really really nice uh, it's so evocative of the original and you will even see the uh, presence of the desert dog branding on the tires which is super cool i mean these little details here are again just so reminiscent of the vintage toy you could honestly convince yourself that this was just a, a repaint of some kind or a reissue now one thing that is noticeably very different and one of the biggest tells of this 
this being a, a new toy, is the, the little headlights just here, look, which look very different to the vintage toy. Of course, on the original, these were little peg holes. Actually, they, they doubled as headlights and they were peg holes for his fists. But here the fists are fully integrated inside the, the cap for transformation, as we'll see. Now, this being the anime version, there are some differences to both the vintage toy and the toy colors version of this mold as well, the C01. Uh, and of course, one of those is this anime styled Autobot logo here with just the kind of white outline, which I think looks superb. And you can see that's also true of the windows here. If we just kind of tip that forward a little bit, you can see it's got blue tinted windows on this version uh, instead of the kind of more not quite clear but but you know kind of clear-ish version of the the vintage toy okay so it's time to play spot the difference here although i'm sure you'll be able to work out which is which pretty quickly so we're going to keep missing link on the left for all of these comparisons and this is a vintage reissue this is the chronicle reissue here on the right and no doubt you'll notice straight off the bat that again it's those uh, those headlights with the little peg holes that are the major tell here although there is a little difference on the bumper as well this has got the two little holes uh, just there as you can see which are not present on the missing link so they have updated that a little bit in terms of the design but otherwise this is remarkably close i would say the proportions are very close not quite one-to-one -one. like there is a little bit of difference this looks a little bit taller to my eye uh, overall but god it's very close the same is true from the side to be honest i mean again you can sort of see maybe in like the joints and places that if you really go looking for it there's a there's a few differences here or there but this is so close I honestly think that from a glance you could be fooled that this is the vintage toy and certainly if you didn't know what you were looking for I don't think you would spot the difference at this point. Now of course you will notice some differences like here with the this has obviously got stickers decals on the on the back of it whereas this version doesn't and this being the anime version the colors are a little bit different as well so do bear that in mind. Uh, this reissue particularly has a, rather bizarrely a hollow trailer hitch as well uh, whereas actually the the, the non-hollow version on the missing link is more accurate to the vintage toy. So so here's something I've been keen to try. We're going to have a bit of a weigh-in. Now first up is the vintage Optimus Prime. That is the lightest actually and comes in at 145 grams. Uh, so next up we have the reissue. This is the Chronicle reissue just there. That is 156 grams, so a little bit heavier than the vintage version, weirdly. Uh, and then we have Missing Link. Now this is the heaviest, I think, yeah, 164 grams. I should mention that I have removed the little matrix accessory in the chest. We'll take a look at that a little bit later, uh, just to kind of reduce the weight there. But of course, this one does have the fists integrated, whereas the two uh, vintage ones do not. Anyway, whilst we've got the vintage Prime out of the box, we may as well have a go with the trailer as well, which fits perfectly onto the new trailer hitch. It's literally one for one, so this looks epic. Now, as I say, I have already just removed the little matrix accessory that goes in there uh, inside the cab uh, which you can just plug back in very easily and that allows you to then see so plug in your matrix of leadership for prime's chest just there uh, but we'll take a bit more of a look at that in robot mode because the the vintage style of the cab this is how it looks with just the sort of two seats in the middle uh, like so and th again this is a, a very uh, faithful one-to-one -one recreation of that and it does mean that you can fit little Diaclone drivers in there. Now this is a Diaclone, uh, Diaclone reboot driver just there, but I do have some of the vintage versions kicking around somewhere as well, but this guy is the same size, so it does very nicely. Uh, so you can just fit them in there if you, if you really want to. It's everything I could have wanted it to be in truck mode, in all honesty. And I've been looking forward to this thing so much that I almost convinced myself that it couldn't live up to that height, but just based on this first impression, yeah, it's really doing it for me. But let's go ahead and check out Transformation anyway. Now, a lot of this will be very familiar to anyone that's ever transformed a G1 Optimus before, but one thing that is different is the, <laughs> the fists coming out of the side of the cab here, which, you know, again, before you would have had to have plugged them in at the end. That is truly bizarre to see, but they just tuck away nicely on the inside just there. That's super cool. But otherwise, that arm transformation is so familiar. And of course, it's just the same on the other side. So just fold that out, fold out the fist, and then bring that arm round as well. Next, you want to fold over the head. And uh, that actually feels a little stiffer than, <laughs> than I remember. Uh, my instinct would have been to just fold the legs down like the vintage version, but uh, actually apparently you're supposed to separate these legs out like that, first of all, uh, because there's a little nub just here that would catch otherwise. Now that has meant that these two sort of wheel sections are folded out to the side a little bit as well, so that's unusual versus <laughs> the vintage version, uh, but that enables you now to just actually fold the leg down like so, uh, and then you can just pull it out to the side. You can just see there these little 
uh, piece is just there on a kind of slider mechanism. Uh, same thing on this side. There we go, just clicks out like that uh, and just kind of gives a little bit better proportions to the hips. No surprises what's left, you just fold the feet up like so and they do actually hinge. <laughs> really, that's it. So here he is. Now I've kept him in a sort of stoic, classic vintage toy pose for now uh, because that's really how I wanted to show it off before we start looking at articulation, but my word, <sighs> uh, speechless. I mean, let's be really clear, this is it's the G1 toy. I mean, there are obvious differences, and again, we'll do a comparison of the robot modes in just a minute. But for all intents and purposes, this may as well be the, the same toy in many regards. You know, if it didn't have the articulation, it would just be a, a recreation of that same vintage mold, almost one for one. And you know, I'm sure some may question the need for that. I have seen a couple of people saying like, well, what's the point of it? You know, I could just buy the original or I don't like the look of this one or whatever it may be. And, and that's fine. You know, I totally respect those opinions. Uh, of course, you know, there's always gonna be a range of opinions on any product like this. But for me and for many other people, this is everything we've wanted to see for the last 40 years, dare I say. Now, before we look at articulation, let's get into some of the details. I mean, the head sculpt here is just perfection, honestly. Again, literal one-to-one -one versus the vintage toy. Uh, here, obviously, you've got the blue eyes uh, and different paint, you know, for the anime version, but so, so good. Stuff like the hands will no doubt stand out to people visually as being very different to the vintage version. And again, you know, you don't have to peg in the fists here. And it's not just a simple peg hole. They are actually articulated fists, as we'll see. But then again, you've got all the kind of molded detail here on the top, which on the vintage version was a decal on his forearms just here. Uh, here it is molded actually into the plastic itself. Uh, and then on the toy version, it's painted on this version. It is painted, but it's just this sort of bare red finish to match the animation. Again, the same is true on the feet. You know, you would get the paint on the toy version to kind of better match the original. Uh, here you've got that same molding just with the gray finish to kind of look like the cartoon again. And here we go. Ultimately, this is what it's all about, this comparison. And I'm really struck by how one-to-one -one it is again. Uh, it's more obvious the differences in this mode, you know, and we'll run through some of that, but honestly, even just looking at them and even considering the kind of anime styled colors on the missing link toy here, it's so close. It's mind blowing, honestly. Now, one thing that does slightly surprise me is I think the missing link toy is actually a little bit taller, just like a tiny bit taller anyway, and that is down to the hips. Uh, there's kind of an additional sort of little bit included just under here for the articulation, I guess. And that does make him just a hair taller. Now, I have had a, f a few people I've noticed that have been talking about the fact that this is very gappy at the back and why didn't they kind of clean this up and make it look better uh, versus the vintage version. And let me just say loud and proud right now that if they had have done that, this toy would appeal to me a lot, lot, lot less than it does. I'm so thrilled that they did not make those sorts of perceived enhancements to this design, because this is exactly what I wanted it to be, a faithful one-to-one -one recreation of the existing mold with more articulation. So speaking of which, of course, he can turn his head from side to side like so, that works really nicely. Now he can't look up and down as such, but you can make use of that transformation flap like that. If indeed that's something that you really wanna leverage, some people might think that looks a little bit goofy, but it's there if you want it. Now the big moment that we've all been waiting for, of course, you've got arm articulation out to the side like so, that's really quite impressive. It actually goes even further thanks to two hinges just there. So that's just, incredible honestly absolutely mind-blowing then of course the arms will rotate up at the shoulder that's obviously nothing new the vintage toy could do that as well not quite in the same way so it's really the outward motion that is new there in that regard uh, and it's a similar story at the elbow which again moves in a very similar fashion to the the vintage toy that did actually have some good movement in there but what is new is those ratchets. Listen to that. Now he does have a wrist swivel just there and you can open the fingers like that as well. So strange. But yeah, that's a little thing. Similar story in the hips, which can now move from side to side like so, which is uh, really quite incredible. Uh, and they will move out quite far actually as well. So you get a, a decent kind of bend just there at the hips, not quite 90 degrees, but not far off. And then again, you've got some amazing ratchets in these knees. Listen to that. And that goes all the way to, well, I mean, look at that bend. Oh, and I should mention that the knees actually have that really cool kind of click backwards one as well for that sort of stance that you can do with the kind of backward knees. So that's pretty cool. And you can see here the little swivel in the leg as well. And I will say that that piece there 
feel like I want to be a little bit careful with that. Do you know what I mean? It's a little bit stiff. And again, you've got ankle tilt kind of, you know, toe articulation going on there as well. So quite a bit of free movement in the feet. Now, yes, he does have an ab crunch as well, but oh, it's really tight. There we go. It's basically, it's not like a sort of freely moving ab crunch. It's like a, a solid click into place that you can see just there. And uh, looks a little bit bizarre, like on first impression, but uh, I'm sure we'll have some fun with that. And although it is a little bit impeded by everything else going on, there is a bit of a waist swivel going on here as well. So you will definitely get some movement out of that. And here you go. It all means that whilst this toy may look a lot like the vintage original, it certainly does not move like it. When did you ever see 1984 Optimus Prime, the toy, moving like this? amazing. Again, this kind of pose just gives you a really good example of what this toy can actually do. You know, the idea of a vintage G1 Optimus Prime in a running pose is previously unheard of. Uh, and just before anybody questions it, I mean, the balance on this thing is incredible. It's not propped up or stuck to the table in any way. I mean, there you go. <laughs> it's literally just balanced. Uh, so yeah, really, really quite incredible. So in terms of other features, of course, you can put that matrix accessory back in the chest as well there we go also really digging how that looks through the window just there that's superb although i do really like that they uh, included this as an optional piece and not a, a kind of non-optional uh you know molded detail i think that's uh, it's a really good solution for me and there you go i was curious but he can actually hold his matrix as well i mean i never thought i would live to see the day but there you go a g1 optimus prime toy the classic version holding his matrix. Then of course we can fit his blaster accessory into his hand pretty easily as well. That just tabs in ex exactly the same as the, the classic toy. Although here the major advantage is that he can actually hold it properly, unlike the vintage version because of the way it was designed, it always had to kind of sit a little bit askew. Not so here, it looks terrific. Even better, there's a second little handle on this rifle enabling him to actually hold it double-handed if that's what you want to do. I mean, that is cartoon Optimus thrown through, isn't it? It just looks... <laughs> just terrific my god this toy then you've got the battle axe accessory as i say and that just pegs in very similarly over the top of the fist like so and then you just close up that little flap at the bottom and there we go you can see that's on there that looks really good as well and overall my word i'm speechless i love it i love everything about it i just think what's so great about it is that it looks phenomenal next to old school vintage g1 transformers like these and yet it feels so new i mean it's a, a kind of an almost exact one-to-one -one recreation of the classic mold and yet it's entirely its own thing i mean in a world where we're already this well served for optimus prime toys that there's, <laughs> there's all of this stuff going on at the same time this truly feels like something a little bit different and yet the kind of thing that as i say we've been waiting so long for I mean, 40 years for them to do G1, but with articulation. And now it's here. I'm just so hungry for more. Now, obviously, I'm aware that there's also Hasbro's retro reissue line going on at the moment, which I'm a big fan of. And you can see some of those toys here. I love them. Uh, and I, apparently, yes, there is a retro Optimus Prime from Hasbro on the way as well to kind of, you know, go alongside this Takara effort. I don't necessarily see that as a clash. Like, I'm interested in both projects. But besides that... I just want more Missing Link. I mean, you know, by all means, do a Hot Rod, do a Rodimus Prime, do an Ultra Magnus, do all of it, do literally any of it, and I am interested. In conclusion then, amazing first impression for this figure. I was super excited for it, and it has not disappointed. Now, as I said, if you like this style of review, please do let me know down in the comments. Uh, you know, I do plan to do a full and kind of more edited review on this figure once the Toy Colors version arrives as well. So would you be interested to see that? please do let me know and let me know your thoughts on this figure. Are you excited for this? Do you have this on the way? Could you not care less? I'd love to hear about that. I should also mention that this video is brought to you by TF Source, so I'll throw a link to their site in the video description below. You can check them out. And uh, also, please don't forget to drop me a like for this video as well. That would really be appreciated. So uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. TTFN.